typical environment for a boom slung is the savanna or a woodland. The boom slung is found virtually throughout sub-Saharan Africa. It belongs to family Colubridae, the largest family of snakes with representatives on each continent except Antarctica. There are only a few colubrid snakes in the world which have venom potent enough to kill a human. Boom slungs have rear fangs located in the back of their jaw. Contrary to popular belief that they can only bite a small digit, they can actually open their mouth very wide. Drop for drop, this is the most venomous snake of Africa. The venom is hemotoxic and causes uncontrolled bleeding if not treated with antivenom. However, bites occur very rarely as boom slungs are alert, unaggressive and move quickly away from confrontations. They hunt lizards, frogs, birds or small mammals. This snake is a perfect example of a deadly venomous species which in reality poses little threat to humans. The boom slung is not the only rear fang snake in sub-Saharan Africa with venom capable of killing an adult human. This is the southern twig snake, also known as the vine snake. It is diurnal, arboreal, and secretive. The body is slim and the head is long with a pointed snout. If the twig snake feels threatened, it inflates the neck and front half of its body and flicks its bright tongue up and down. If that doesn't help, it may strike. Venom of twig snakes is hemotoxic and causes non-clotting blood. A bitten person will need a blood transfusion because no anti-venom is produced. Fatal bites were inflicted only on people who tried to handle or catch a twig snake. Placid and perfectly camouflaged, twig snakes are not a serious threat to humans. There are four species, and the other three, like this Usambara vine snake, live in woodlands and tropical forests, where they hunt mostly lizards, including chameleons. Great eyesight helps them to localize their prey. Most of Africa's deadly venomous snakes are front-fanged elapids and vipers. From elapids, cobras are a major snake bite hazard on this continent. Southern Africa is inhabited by a very special species, the rinkals. It prefers grasslands and moist savannas. Rinkals tolerate urbanization and are locally abundant. The common name derives from the Dutch ring hals, meaning ringed neck, because of the light color crossbands usually found around the throat. The cytotoxic and neurotoxic venom of this cobra is potentially very dangerous. However, this snake has an amazing complex defense behavior other than biting. When it feels in danger, 
it often plays dead. Rinkhals drops its body on the ground and twists upside down with the mouth open. It waits until the danger disappears. Then it comes back to life. Rinkhals is not part of the true cobra lineage and separated from true cobras millions of years ago. It differs from true cobras mainly in the fact that it has keeled scales, gives birth to live young, and has an upper jaw with fangs, but without solid teeth. On the other hand, it very often shows a behavior typical for true cobras, like hooding. Wrinkles can also spit venom. It mostly does it while lunging forward from a defensive position, but can also spit without hooding. Spitting evolved two times in African cobras, in rinkals and in true cobras. The venom needs to cause pain in the eyes and irritation on skin. So cobras, which spit, have predominantly cytotoxic venom. Those which don't spit usually have neurotoxic venom. While some true cobras, like the red spitting cobra, prefer very dry, semi-arid landscape, Others live mostly in humid savannas. One of the biggest species is the black-necked spitting cobra. It often stands its ground and can spit with high accuracy to a distance of about three meters. This is one of Africa's most dangerous snake species on account of its huge range, relative abundance, and potent venom. The black-necked spitting cobra lives in West, Central, and East Africa, while the Mozambique spitting cobra inhabits Southeastern Africa. It is smaller, but often very abundant. And in some areas, it causes the majority of serious snake bites. Mozambique spitting cobras are excellent spitters. This species is called Mafezi in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. Mafezi is a Zulu word meaning snake, which shows how common the Mozambique spitting cobra is in this province. Many people and dogs get bitten or spat at in urban areas, especially during the rainy season. Anyone who has been spat at should visit a hospital or eye clinic. Mozambique spitting cobras often look for prey around houses and frequently go inside where they bite sleeping people. The reason for this is unknown. Cobras probably misidentify human warmth or smell as a prey item. This major human snake conflict occurs on the eastern coast of South Africa, for example, in Durban area.
This is the home city of Nick Evans, an experienced snake rescuer. He often rescues the most feared snake of Africa. Nicely done. Hey, hey. Just done this break. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, that's. I was expecting something a lot smaller. You weren't even thinking you'd get it. <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, this was like our last stop because I was like, I think it's gone. <laughs> Check the amazing. injury there, old oh, injury. What happened? Oh, it's a big black mamba. Bloody hell. <laughs> That's a big one under your child's bed. Whoa. How's that, eh? Can you believe it? That's a proper mamba. <laughs> Uh, my name is Nick Evans and I run KZN Amphibian and Reptile Conservation. I spend my whole life trying to help conserve them. So uh, I'm kept very busy with snake removal. So when someone has an unwanted snake in their property, they phone me. And I also do snake awareness presentations at schools, uh, companies, communities, um, just to try and help people understand snakes a bit better. Well, in Durban, we have a lot of people and a lot of snakes. And Natural areas are getting smaller and smaller and so the snakes have little option but to come into human households and I don't know if it's just Durban but humans can be quite messy. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of rubbish around human houses and when there's rubbish it brings in the rats and when there's rats the snakes come. So a lot of people just attract them. You know there's a lot of people that keep rabbits and chickens and and all sorts of small animals and that attracts snakes as well. It's free caged food. So we can't really blame the snakes. So with most species, I just capture them and then I go and release them in a nearby reserve. But with black mambas and green mambas, and we were doing Mozambique spitting cobras, I'll collect DNA, I'll weigh them, measure them. Um, as I say, take the DNA, sex them, and then release them as well. With black mambas in certain valleys, uh, I microchip them, put an ID, I give them their own ID number and uh, yeah, release them. If they're not looking too good, if they're unhealthy or they're, if they're injured, I'll take them to a facility that will give them the correct treatments. Um, and once they're a lot better, we'll release them again. Have a look at it. There's already a little bit of a uh, serous sanguineous type of uh, discharge. Do you want me to remove all of this stuff? It's pretty deep. This black mamba has a deep wound which needs to be examined and properly treated. It will stay in care of veterinarians for a while until it recovers. The black mamba is the second longest venomous snake on our planet, right after the king cobra from Asia. Maximum size of this species is probably around 3.5 meters, but there are unsubstantiated reports of specimens up to 4.3 meters. When threatened, black mambas often flatten their necks and open their mouths. The name black mamba is derived from the black interior of the mouth, not from the color of the body. These snakes usually have gray or light brown color. If the warning does not work, the mamba can strike repeatedly. Black mambas live in coastal bush, moist and dry savannas and semi-deserts. They are relatively common in East and Southern Africa. 
Their main prey are small and medium-sized mammals and birds, which they kill with a very potent neurotoxic venom, causing rapid muscle paralysis. Black mambas are fast-moving, agile and diurnal. They are at home on the ground and they can also climb well. A bite from a black mamba is a medical emergency and rapid transport to hospital is needed, followed by treatment with antivenom and respiratory support. Despite the terrible reputation, black mambas bite many fewer people than carpet vipers, puff adders, or most cobras. Mambas are shy and intelligent snakes, and they avoid confrontation whenever possible. There are even cases of dry bites, which means that the mambas did not release their venom. The black mamba is the most iconic venomous snake of savannas and other open habitats of Africa. Brown forest cobras also live in moist savannas or grasslands. But there is one very special place where these snakes thrive. The Musamwa Island in Lake Victoria. This tiny piece of land is home to a big bird colony. Thousands of gulls and cormorants breed here safely without disturbance from big predators. Chicks of different ages are everywhere on the rocks or in the dense vegetation. Such a huge amount of birds produces a very loud noise. There is a small village inhabited only by fishermen on the other side of the island. They work here and occasionally visit their families on the shore of the huge lake. Every morning, new fish are brought to Musambwa Island and the daily routine starts. Astonishingly, a normal part of the day for fishermen is to encounter a wild brown forest cobra. These deadly venomous snakes live here in perfect harmony with people and bites are almost non-existent. The fishermen believe that these snakes are spirits of the island and never hurt them or chase them away. Local cobras are totally oblivious to people walking around and are not even properly hooding up. Snakes have plenty of food on this island and randomly slither around the huts during the day and night. This is a unique example of a very close and peaceful cohabitation of people and venomous snakes in Africa. Cobras on this island have pitch black color except the light parts on the head and the neck. The brown forest cobra likes forests and woodlands, but it is also very adaptable to human disturbance. There are other elapid snake species which are more dependent on the existence of well-preserved tropical forests.
Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Or if you want to support us more, you can even become a member of our YouTube channel. You can also buy our merchandise. Uh, link to our store is under the video in the description. Thank you.